reinvigorated by his discovery of the trailer park and the vital food within, Jules doesn't linger in his hilltop safety for long as he strikes back towards his new focus. During the over hour long walk, he doesn't consider the fact that there would be no house alarm this time, leaving the undead to roam as they please. Getting flashes of the nightmare he had endured at the country club as the infected pour from the trees, Jules doesn't give in to his fear as he instead slowly works through the growling crowd. Now terrified that every shift in the trees signaled more undead, Jules has to approach his destination at a snail's pace as his eyes peer through the afternoon light and the spattering rain. Finally making it to the trailer park late in the day, Jules accepts that he wouldn't even make it to any of the homes, but is instead content to chip away at the hordes wandering the perimeter. Finding even more strays guarding the path back to his station, Jules begins to grapple with the reality that daily trips back and forth would not only be dangerous, but exhausting. Able to finally let his guard down as he returns home, his mind continues to churn away at a solution to his current problem. Though I've had hope restored via the trailer park, my life is not without danger and deadly traps. Unlike my first approach with the house alarm, every time I return to the park, I am faced with wandering undead that lurk and hide amongst the trees like landmines waiting to be discovered. As long as I am careful and diligent, this shouldn't be my demise, but it makes every journey to my new source of food tedious. Along with that, the walk takes up the majority of my day and limits the time I can spend fighting towards the next home. My next goal is to claim one of the trailers when it's reasonably safe. That way I can shelter there overnight, slow and steady. Jules. Another rainy morning accompanies his trudge back to the trailer park, but Jules's fire refuses to be snuffed out, 
by the bleak and dreary landscape. Deciding to shout and scream just outside his destination in hopes of drawing out any surprise attackers, Jules keeps to his commitment of slow and steady progress. Witnessing yet another horde shambling into the tree line, the damp and determined survivor simply lifts his trusty crowbar up and gets to work. Needing to have something to show for his efforts for today, he wastes no time in locating one of the larger groups and begins the tedious process of picking them off a handful at a time. Even after hours of killing, Jules has barely made a dent in the larger horde, resigning to exploring another part of the park in hopes of creeping into one of the unexplored homes. Unable to find food at first, he does come across the next best thing, knowledge. More homes brings more food, but the meager amount he's acquired over two days isn't sustainable. Wondering if he could finally find a serviceable vehicle, he checks the one in relative safety before setting his sights on another still guarded by the undead. Beginning to lose the light, and still hearing more in the nearby trailer, Jules once again relies on caution, and decides to begin the long journey back home. During his walk he can't help but shake the nagging feeling that he was stuck in an endless loop, fighting and clawing his way to calories just to burn them over and over again on his way home. He had undoubtedly achieved much, but he was still a long way from being secure in his survival. Once again using his love for literature as a form of meditation, Jules starts the process of familiarizing himself with the basics of mechanics, still holding out hope that the coming days would provide him a new ride.
mindlessly falling into his routine of heading towards the trailers, Jules is stopped in his tracks by the encroaching fog, finding himself unwilling to fight in such poor conditions. Though he could never have a day of real leisure, Jules rewards himself with a time away from violence, instead focusing on the chores and tasks that would see him through the coming winter. Tending not only to his physical needs, but his mental as well, Jules turns his attention towards his disorganized home that had been long neglected during his struggle for survival. Finding a deep and lasting peace in the comfort of structure, Jules discovers his heart aching for the library he had once managed with such meticulous care. Perhaps if he fought hard enough he could attain a fraction of what he once cherished so dearly, but even thinking about the effort it would take threatened to dislodge the precarious relief Jules had found. After a long day of peace and quiet, Jules once again moves to reward himself by attempting his first warm meal in weeks. Clumsily throwing together a soup with his intense lack of knowledge regarding cooking, he finds that he cares little for the final result, but is more invested in the simple act of reaching another milestone. Ending off his much needed day of rest with more reading and the purifying of his collected water, Jules feels confident in the name he had given his new home, Little Hope. Waking up to another cold and rainy day, Jules willingly departs his safe haven as he returns to the hunt for more food and security. Basking in the tranquility of nature during his last sliver of calm, the tested determination of Jules begins to rise once again as the imminent arrival of bloodshed grows closer with each and every step.
beating his way through another cluster of the undead, Jules eventually reaches a locked truck before he shifts his focus on securing one of the trailers on the edge of the park. While out on the hunt for more planks to shore up his defenses, Jules finds another cluster of calories to stash away, as his relentless efforts appear to be finally paying off. Finally checking the car he'd abandoned the other day, he discovers the key in the glove box, but quickly learns its tank is empty, though that was a problem that could easily be resolved. Acquiring more food, Jules also comes across a particular magazine he had longed for over the past couple weeks, a guide to identifying edible and poisonous vegetation that he could now leverage to help supplement his growing supply of calories. Still not feeling quite safe enough to sleep in his temporary safe house, Jules opts to bring back the haul he'd acquired and return tomorrow with a gas can for the car. Making it back to his cozy room, he inspects a bundle of clothes he had acquired from one of the infected. Looking both sturdier and warmer than what he currently had on, Jules looks past the disgust of how he had come by it. Instantly grateful for the warmer clothes as he wakes up to a bitterly cold and wet morning, he collects the can of gas he had set aside before embarking on another trek back to the park. So focused on his goal of reaching the out-of-gas vehicle, Jules barely registers the slaughter he commits while pouring the precious fuel into the rusted tank. Now in 
emboldened by the fact that his home was only a quick drive away, he delves deeper into the park he had been clearing over the past several days. Scavenging food to bring back to his station, he's surprised to find the other side of the park almost completely devoid of the undead, coming to the assumption that his efforts must have drawn them into the field he had drenched in blood. Discovering a near pristine truck at the entrance, he has no luck in locating the keys, but enjoys the growing sensation of confidence as he moves about the area he had cleared out all by himself. Unable to shake this true feeling of accomplishment, he strides happily back to his fueled up steed before being confronted with its fragile and rattling engine. While the little coop wasn't in pristine condition, it was miles ahead of the true rust buckets he had been forced to rely on providing jewels an invisible shield of resilience that not even the undead could pierce. Knowing that basic mechanics was next on his growing list of necessary skills, Jules tows one of the nearby wrecks into his yard before puttering his new companion into a proper parking spot. Admiring the worn and beaten vehicle with a tired smile, Jules does spot a steady leak coming from the gas tank, but accepts the defect temporarily with plans of fixing it when he's able. Truly indulging in the comfort and tranquility he had fought so hard to achieve, Jules actually looks forward to the arrival of tomorrow, excited by all the new possibilities he's made available for himself. Ending his victorious day by making headway into his literature on car maintenance, he finally drifts off to sleep, hopeful and content. Rising before the sun, he wastes no time in grabbing his supplies and hopping in his newly acquired trophy. Though the engine rattled and a slow trickle of fuel was left in its wake, Jules knew he had finally acquired the key to his survival.
Taking note he would have to clear the growing stragglers at the entrance to his road, he steers himself back in the direction of the trailer park in hopes of fully exploring every home. Refueling from a wrecked car in his path, he recognizes the need to fix the leak, but again pushes the dreary thought to the back of his mind. A fuel hose had fallen completely loose, dumping the contents of his tank across the cold asphalt. Though he could easily reattach it, Jules was now forced to face the reality of his situation. Nothing he achieved was ever secure. It could all be taken away in a singular moment. Stranded halfway between home and his destination, he decides to at least scavenge part of his day by finishing the journey on foot and finding more gas to get his unsteady ride home. Finding himself growing more and more frustrated by the simple setback, as every step serves as a constant reminder of his brutal existence, Jules channels his anger and aggression towards the undead, making sure to leave none alive, or as alive as they could be. Finally reaching the trailer park, he knows that none of the cars within hold any gas, and instead turns his sights on whatever lies on the other side of the main road. Discovering a parking lot with a handful of vehicles, he's unsurprised to also spy a dutiful horde of infected guarding his potential salvation.
Making it past the wall of rotting flesh, and finding one of the trucks ready to be siphoned, he figures out that he stumbled across a storage facility, which more than likely held some resource or tool he would need for the winter. Again in hopes of finding keys for any of the cars parked in the lot, he begins clearing the office building, before being predictably disappointed. Only having a gas can of fuel and a scrap of knowledge to show for his day, Jules begins to trek back to his car, bitter and annoyed, but still full of the determination that had got him this far. No longer seeing his newly acquired vehicle as a trophy, but instead as a resource drain and a death trap, Jules turns his obsessive mind towards the pursuit of knowledge and the ability to hotwire. Experimenting on the clunker he had dragged into his yard, Jules isn't fully prepared to waste an entire day on the mess of wires and vague instructions he has to work with, instead opting to successfully see through the journey he had been denied yesterday. Interest piqued by the storage units, he turns his attention towards them for the day, and wonders what treasures they hold after he's wrenched them from the grip of the undead.
The beginning of his day shows promise, as he comes across a cardboard box stuffed with books and manuals, then finding a generator in the next unit over. But slowly the excitement of wrenching these mystery boxes open fades, as one after another reveals nothing but dusty furniture and old clothes. Eventually feeling safe enough to drive his precarious vehicle into the property, he makes swift work of loading up the generator he's unfamiliar with before turning his attention to the smaller units indoors. Initially finding the same junk he discovered outside, he eventually stumbles across a manual that was as good as gold. A collection of glossy pages that held the intricate details of commercial vehicles and how to service them. Thinking over what he had found as he loots a handful of the remaining units, he begins to realize that fixing his current clunker was a waste of energy. With the manual he now had in his possession, the only thing standing between him and a reliable pickup truck was the ability to hotwire, which Jules knew he could obtain if he set his tireless mind to it. As he begins his journey back up the hill to his station, Jewel finds himself in a rare state of reflection and the relative safety of his rolling liability. He hadn't truly taken a moment to stop and think, to recognize the insane accomplishment he had achieved with the simple fact of still being alive. Kevin had always seen him as weak, perhaps rightfully so as Jules never displayed an ounce of drive after the world had shattered into a million pieces. But now Jules had more than proven he was willing and able to not only survive, but to persevere in a scenario where so many others would have stumbled. Looking around at the sanctuary he had built for himself, and igniting yet another fire to provide a comforting and warm meal, Jules finds his mind wandering to Marcus and the ultimate sacrifice he had made. Had giving his life been worth it? Had he seen something in Jules that Jules couldn't see in himself? Would Marcus have even made it through the same hell and come out the other side? Maybe, but maybe not. Waking up with a simple goal for the day, Jules again wastes no time as he strikes out into the morning fog and revs the pathetic engine of his tiny car. Freeing the other wreck from the tendrils of nature, Jules recognizes the opportunity this utility vehicle provides given his newly acquired manual. Not interested in attempting to save the broken and beaten SUV, he instead hauls its corpse back to his home to experiment, determined and fixated on ripping it apart, piece by piece.
hours begin to pass by as the enthralled survivor moves from one tool to the next, undoing bolts, bulbs, radios, screws, doors, and windows. Nothing was safe from his keen eye, and every part he could pair with his literature served as a small milestone towards his destination. Feeling mostly confident with his ability to now bypass the need for keys, Jules rewards himself with a bottle of wine before discovering how unkempt his hair had become. Rectifying the mop that had grown atop his head, Jules once again recognizes the man staring back at him in the mirror before he slinks off to bed to get lost in the sweet embrace of the written word. Now mostly confident in his ability to hotwire a more reliable vehicle, Jules hopes he enters his clunker of a car for the final time in preparation for the day. Running dangerously low on fuel, his gas-guzzling ride dumps the contents of its tank back onto the road yet again, requiring Jules to feed it a few precious drops to make it the rest of the way. Making it within walking distance, he siphons the minuscule amount of fuel from his car before trekking towards the trailer park and the storage units. First checking the white truck he initially had high hopes for, he realizes the engine isn't nearly as pristine as he'd hoped and sets his sights across the road. Deciding between the two nearly identical trucks at the storage unit, he settles on the black one as his new ride but holds off on experimenting on it as he delves back into the nearby facility. Finding a spare generator, he returns back to the vehicles in the lot before applying his clumsy knowledge to the two sacrificial rides, only deciding to attempt his hot wiring of the black truck once he had wasted his early blunders on the blue one. Delighted to see all his studying and practice pay off, he acknowledges the fact that he doesn't have enough fuel to make it back to the station, and probes carefully down the main road in hopes of another source. Managing to siphon a reasonable amount of gas right under the nose of the lingering undead, 
He pours the well-earned fuel into his new ride, before feeling a stubborn smile working its way across his lips. Driving back to his home in high spirits, he stops and takes the time to drag the wrecked car off the main road, knowing that he would now frequently make this trip in the coming days. Making it home as a steady rain begins to pick up, Jules takes the time to clear away the wrecks he had parked in his yard before pulling his new beauty into the parking spot that was still stained with leaking fuel. Rewarding his hard work and determination with another dinner from a can and an entire bottle of wine, Jules feels accomplished, but still hungry to see even more progress. Spying the harsher rain mounting outside, Jules puts on as many layers before covering himself in a poncho he had picked up. Already he was struggling to stay warm, but being drenched to the bone would only secure his fate. Knowing he had ignored the necessary pursuit of food for too long, he sets his sights back on the trailer park once more, with hopes that he'd return with a truck bed full of calories. Parking in the peaceful courtyard he had fought so hard to achieve, he begins moving from house to house in search of anything he might need, but is eventually faced by the threat of the undead once more. horrors with his now developed and systematic process, he hardly recognizes the amount of blood he is spilling as his eyes stay ever present on the nearby trailer and his goal. Unable to find any food in the few trailers that were in relative safety, Jules repositions his truck and sets his sights farther across the park to the homes he hadn't cleared. Thank you. 
Ignoring the chill and the rain, Jules' unshakable will keeps him focused on the essential clearing of the undead. Eventually, as the drizzle becomes a pour, and the dark clouds of the storm roll overhead, Jules takes a small victory of acquiring some food before deciding to retreat back to his sanctuary to weather the coming thunderstorm. Listening to the growing wind whistling through the trees, as he begins the slow process of unloading and organizing his supplies, Jules eventually hears the roaring thunder he had predicted. Setting up the grill he had taken from the trailer park beneath his awning, he seeks the comfort of a warm meal amongst this dreary evening to help keep his spirits high and unbreakable. Waking up to a wet cold piercing his cozy room, Jules attempts to insulate the broken window before preparing himself for another run out to the blood-stained trailer park. Picking up where he left off yesterday, he quickly gets to work bloodying his blade as his stomach stubbornly growls in reminder.
continually disappointed by the amount of food he can secure, he doesn't let his dampening outlook slow his progress as his muddy feet carry him from one house to the next. Stumbling across someone's stash of weapons, Jules collects the bundle of tools with a half-hearted smirk before turning his direction back towards his waiting truck. Now curious if he could relatively secure the trailer he had planned on making an operating point, he locates a few clusters of the undead and begins to remove them with endless patience. Feeling safe enough to move inside once more, he surveys the work he had managed before making a list of all that must be done to make this exposed shelter secure. Not wanting to waste the light of the day, he sets out to search a few of the unchecked trailers to the north while also measuring the amount of infected guarding their contents. Acquiring enough food to at least account for today, he eventually turns his attention back to his temporary home to make sure he felt comfortable enough to sleep in it through the night.
boarding up all the windows, Jules feels the ache of today's efforts seeping into his muscles as he indulges in one of the cans he had discovered, hoping that there would be many more to come with tomorrow. Relieved to be undisturbed through the night, Jules does spot a few stray walkers in the early light of the dawn that he dispatches before getting to work on carving his way north. Fighting past noon, Jules spots only larger and larger hordes blocking his path, as the homes he can reach provide only the bare minimum in food. Even having committed to his plan of waking up here had shown to have little effect, as the sheer amount of undead made progress agonizingly slow. neglected this journal for an entire week, but I suppose for a good reason. I have been relentlessly busy and diligent. Every waking moment either my mind or my body is busy securing and fortifying my survival. So many things that I thought were out of reach have been returned to me, and now the danger of hope and aspirations is creeping back into my heart. This morning was the first day I woke up somewhere else besides the isolated radio station. It was also the first morning that the true bite of winter's chill showed its ugly face. I must remind myself that it is only October, and already my clothes aren't enough to keep me warm. Power and heat are the two most essential utilities I need if I'm going to make it through the coming winter. Thankfully I've already found a generator, 
but I have to find some sort of manual or pamphlet that describes its operation so that I don't end up mangling the important piece of equipment. Heat is another matter. A wood stove would be ideal, but just the thought of finding one and dragging it up the hill to the station makes me ill. I'm tired of carving through the undead for what I need, but there's no denying that this is the world I live in now. It's dark, and I'm tired, so I shall leave this entry off here. Tomorrow will only bring the same violence that I've grown so resilient to. Jules. Fighting both the chill and the dread of the first snowfall with pancakes, Jules fumbles through mixing up the batter by flashlight before eating the plain breakfast amongst the falling speckles of death that begin to cling to the cold earth. In an attempt to insulate his already stinging nose, he dons the bloody and broken mask he had scavenged from the undead and fights to ignore the rancid and foul smell assaulting his senses. Treading the path he had driven many times by now, he knows it's finally time to loot the entirety of the trailer park so that he could have a complete understanding of his food supply going forward. Rattling past the pile of corpses he had already left, he peers through the smeared lenses of his mask and returns to the bloodshed he had grown all too comfortable with. Rewarded with an initial burst of hope as his first house contains a handful of canned food, he doesn't relent as he continues his work.
Next, he finds not only food, but also the exact clothes he'll need in the coming months. Thick, puffy, and insulated. He can't help but smile at the eggplant-colored coat he stuffs in his bag. Discovering an abandoned work truck with a tank full of gas, he siphons an entire can as his diligence appears to be finally paying off. trailer park, he's faced with the reality of all he's done over the last several weeks, cleaving his way through the endless undead for a brief moment of promise and relief. Looting an ambulance that certainly must have been responding to the chaos of the outbreak, Jules discovers ample medical supplies to bring home that he hopes he'll never actually need. Having checked every house in the park, and armed with a truck bed full of food, Jules lets himself finally feel accomplished as he settles into the comfortable seat of his reliable pickup. Unloading his goods and rewarding himself with dinner and a beer, Jules gives into the exhaustion of the day and wakes up in the cozy safety he had built for himself. For once I don't feel the need to race out of my sanctuary as soon as the sun rises. It is an odd sensation having spare time once again, but it has allowed me to realize something that I had overlooked for far too long. I had lost myself. Somewhere amongst the scramble for survival, the desperate pursuit of living in a world determined to kill me, I had let slip the various traits that made up Jules Wade. I am alive, but I haven't been living, and I'm determined to see that changed. Besides, what is the point of pushing forward if all you're doing is marking days on a calendar? It's time to live again, Jules.
spending the majority of his day off buried in various books, Jules feels a dull spark of his former self beginning to burn in the base of his heart, which both provides him the fuel to go onwards and the fear of his lacking abilities. Thankful for his winter coat as he rises before dawn and prepares to set out once again, Jules gets lost watching the barren trees whip past, as the reality of winter is now undeniable. Slowly exploring further down the main road, he keeps himself on edge as he sets his sights on the mechanic shop he had spotted earlier, though the lack of infected almost makes him more uncertain than if the business had been swarmed. Finding a key for the car parked outside, his looting of the rest of the shop bears little fruit as his hope of securing a carjack is dashed for the foreseeable future. Moving to the diner next door, he once again fears the lack of undead guard dogs, but hopes to find more food to shore up his stores. Disappointed yet again, he looks across the street to the industrial complex where the dead still lingered, and assumes where they are must be where he needs to be. Realizing how difficult it was to fight in his puffy winter coat, he reminds himself of the benefits of firearms, though his untrained hands could do little with them without practice. Clearing the road for his return trip home, he gets back to work clearing the hordes amongst the factories, curious what resources they might hold within.
feeling himself reaching his limit, he rests for a moment before clearing the area around a trailer and its matching truck. Finding practically nothing in the trailer itself, he's surprised to find that the truck still has the key in its ignition, and a look under the hood proves that it is nearly pristine despite the crumbling of society. Though he didn't have a use for it now, Jules's mind already begins to churn over the opportunities such a tool could provide, being able to load up and move whole stores libraries and neighborhoods could be something that secures his survival for potentially years to come. Feeling his eyelids growing heavy, he begins his drive back towards his home while coming to the realization that getting a tractor trailer up to his radio station would be a feat within itself. Waking up to another cold and wet morning atop his hill, Jules is barely phased by the dreary weather as he dons his poncho and bag before carrying his rested feet towards his truck. Deciding it was time to deal with the undead plaguing the entrance to his road, Jules uses the freshness of his energy to scatter their brains across the ground before moving on with his day. Getting a brief respite from the rain as he pulls into the parking lot once again, he attacks the constant stream of undead with a renewed vigor, as he's determined to make it inside the day. Hearing the arrival of a true storm as he makes it through the front doors of the building, he carefully deals with the shambling corpses still hiding within.
Thankful to find the rear of the factory clear of any hordes, he finishes securing the interior before rewarding himself with a refreshing soda from the neglected vending machine. Stepping out into the storm to both check the perimeter and remove the barricade over the door, he delights in the fact that he can simply pull his vehicle into the prepared bays and loot in almost complete safety. Shut away from the undead in the storm, he begins shifting through the many crates and shelves to procure supplies and tools he most certainly would need, but is truly elated to discover the wood stove he had dreamed of resting in one of the sturdy crates. Only hearing the storm getting worse outside, Jules is finally discovered by one of the undead, which serves as the signal for him to make his way home for the evening. Setting the new source of heat directly beside his bed, he wastes no time in loading it full of his prepared firewood before sparking it to life for the first time. first time in what seems like years, I'm sitting comfortably in my bed, not afraid of the undead, not shivering at the cold, not ignoring my grumbling stomach. I have everything I could ever want right now, and it makes me feel both incredibly accomplished and terrified. Fighting harder and harder, claiming more and more comforts, all it does is put me in another position to lose it all, just like the country club. No longer do I fear dying alone in the woods, but now I am pursued by the horror of living long enough to see all my achievements taken from me. I need to figure out how to cheer the fuck up. Jules. <laughs> 